palace that it lived in began its depression earnestly. Built of depression glass, the multicolored 18 spire castle refracted moonbeams infinitesimally in all directions, creating a diaspora of amphora, rainbow sponge lichen, tentacles of aqueous clay, antiquarian autos, and vestiges of insidious microcosmic galaxies. Metal moxie postergrams of enigmatic construct gleam long after he would. A turtle shell door released from the alchemical gold rush, fortune comes to the kingdom of glittering spires upon which we cast spores of his kingly lore. Cone towers and clandestine wishing wells, aerial tables and sugarcane flora, while in the distance, if you listen closely, one can hear the faint echo of Stone Age music emanating from the strangest house in the world. Follow into the knockout room in which a weight is lowered on a visitor's head, banishing all memories. My champagne-tinted beak was still warm and singed, sacked and ruinated by the glorious abandon of last evening's splendor. Am I amnesia and all its stricken traits? Infinite treasures consumed, towns burned, flourishing women debauched. And what the mind shudders to remember. Goodly countries depopulated and left desolate, old inhabitants expelled, trade and traffic decayed, Maids to flowers. Men never count their own desires as right. My own spores and armor scorn all respect of myself. Will hear none but himself. He is an example that which Hippocrates loses law to Dionysus. O maximum starlight specimen, as Marseus when he contended with Apollo, not perceiving that he was being made a laughing stock. He is a convict madman.
In the eyes of wise men and angels, he seems like one that to our thinking walks with his heels upward. So thou laughest at me, and I at thee, all of the third. The last was a moderate excess of elixirs which consumed my revenues. How this concerns and agrees with my present state. Look at you. But of this elsewhere impaired in a man's body, liver, spleen, or any one part be misaffected, all the rest suffer with it. So it is with this economical body of the head be naught, a spendthrift, a drunkard, a whoremaster, a gamester. A good, honest, painful woman many times hath a shrew to her man, a sickly, dishonest, slothful, foolish, careless man to his mate, a proud, peevish flirt, a liquorish, prodigal king. There is a cure. Anoint with the oil of violets and enter fast. Some sweet herbs and a ram's head to be boiled. Water should be warm, not hot, for fear of sweating. New lubricants, capon's grease, especially from his spine and back pain. I must bathe myself in the milk of 500 she asses at once with a subtle bath. In a Cessna-like spermatogenic fashion, they head back towards shore in a mesmerizing mist storm, longing and lunging dutifully in search of piercing every three-ass fruit fly, Trirectimus hermus, to spew the acetacy essence in each and every fruit fly sphincter and triplicate. Such mist thrived, especially in the early days. No hint of menace existed. Yet the first lemmings paused daintily on the very edge of the air and peering outwardly as though in indecision. Unavoidably, the pressure pushed them. When their paws became mist, it was as if they resigned themselves to what was to come. Pretensively, the leaders swam out into the ether. All the other lemmings followed, only their heads shone above the clouds. Ardently, no matter how hard man has tried to claim the dubious glory of being source planet, he might realistically liken himself to maggots in an apple, in everyday moods behaving like a lord of creation, continuing to abase himself, resigning to evolve into a three-ass fruit fly, Trirectimus Hermus Extraordinaire. At that moment, they looked up and saw God's goofball. An animal in its apex of pill and booze leisure, constantly reinvented in forms. A polarity that repels and attracts in a constant flux of power, reeling towards ephemeral stairs of existence. The fantastic living castle has evenings far longer than despair, transfixed with a pocket of empty and transfigured by the misery of breathing.
It believes in the picturesque rocks off as requisite for a swift kick to the rear cleft of the changeling, the modern hallucinating tourist, now hardened his edifice. Porous and proud, now near his climate, the reason of night has fallen. There, all are graced by the taste of tyrants, and in haste wish to shapeshift into sea, not sky, the spells of the tides. Here one can morph without gyptum on the royal shoulders of the moon's halo, inverted as taps with the one that is sky sea, forever pouring, filtering, and pissing a masterpiece on the washed up vintage earth, quiet and tidy as decay.